Was that fantastic or what? That's a sneak peek for tonight. We're going to be having Chris come back for our New Year's Eve party. It's going to be amazing, Pastor. But we got some good stuff to talk about this morning. Uh, we're going to talk about our daily growth book, okay? We've mentioned this is a for sale in the foyer, but this is a book that God has given us. I want to start off, Pastor, just with this letter that you've written. It kind of gives us an overview, a vision of what this book's all about. It starts with 3 John 1, 2. I hope they'll be able to put the, some of the verses up on the screen. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. And I love that verse. It talks it really directly linking our soul's prosperity, our soul's health with our physical health and prospering in everything that we do. You wrote. I, I want to say something there. Yeah. You know, I, I, first of all, I'm so glad that you're here this morning. And, and this is a great way to end your year. Uh, and ending, it's great that you're ending strong. But let's also begin next year really strong. Uh, it's all about choices that you're making. And, and, and this is why we're exposing ourselves to more of the word of God. Because um, you are what you expose yourself to. And that's why the Bible says um, evil company corrupts good morals. One of the ways to destroy your life, destroy your kids' lives, is to expose them to bad company, bad conversations, bad content. You, you will never have an amazing life without, without having great content um, in your life. That means you, you are what you're consuming. You become your environment. So it, this is what we're going to do is we're going to make a decision that this year I'm going to, I'm going to, this is a decision I'm going to make less worldly content, less, um, less content that, that is, in, that doesn't, that's not from God. And I'm, this is what I'm going to do. And more word content. I'm going to expose myself to more worship events. I'm going to come on Sundays. I'm going to commit myself to showing up on Sundays. And understand this, if you don't, like, this is the idea. Don't wish for a better life. Commit to a better life. So that means I wish. Nothing's going to change on a wish. This is not a happy birthday, blow out a candle life. You're going to have to really make some tough commitments. And this is what I've learned about life, is that when God wants to take you to a higher level, he demands a higher commitment. So don't expect to have a better life than 2023 unless you're willing to make a greater commitment that you did in 2023. A 2023 commitment is going to give you another 2023 year. But if you want to have a 2024 life, that means better than it was next, I mean, last year, you're going to have to make some 2024 commitments. Be careful that your dream is, is not, your dream is bigger than your commitment level. Wow. It's just the way it is. So big commitments lead to achievement of big dreams. So this is why we're, you know, really, this is the idea. Either you're going to purchase this book and be committed to studying the Bible this year, every single day, or you're not. But I know this, you'll never be successful in areas you're not committed to be successful in. You'll never grow in areas you're not committed to grow in. This is, this is what I've learned about life. God blesses you when you're passionate. But he does not bless apathetic people, and he doesn't bless lukewarm people. This is why the Bible, what Jesus said this. He goes, I'd rather you be hot or cold, but the lukewarm I will spit out of my mouth. And what he was saying is being lukewarm is obnoxious to him. He's saying be hot for me, and if you're cold for me, this is what you'll at least know. You're cold, and that you will know at least this. You're not right with God, and there's a real good chance being cold will ruin your life, and you'll call on his name. But the lukewarm think they're good because they're warm. You know, the, 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 you know there was a game we used to play when we were kids. Uh, um, you would look to find, dude, hide something. I don't know. What's the name of that game? I don't even know what it's called. What was that? Hot, cold. Praise the Lord. I didn't know. See, now I learned something. I didn't even know what that meant. Hot, cold. But then they, but as they draw close, you go, you're getting warmer. And it works in the hot, cold game, but it doesn't work in life. So wow. this is the idea, if you really want to 100% get what God has for you, this is what's going to have to happen. You're going to have to have a passionate, fiery, 100% commitment. I'm, I'm, I'm so in, I will die for this thing. Is there anybody that will live for Jesus, but also die for this thing? And say, I'm, I'm, not, 
I'm not interested in just being a mediocre believer. I want people to see the fire of God in me because I'll tell you this, the devil's fearful of fiery Christians. How many believe that? Yep. So we're going to go through this book a little bit today, um, but this book is going to get you on fire and keep you on fire all day long. So tell us, read, read what this book will do and then we'll kind of go over some of the content in it. Yeah, so this is the opening letter from you, Pastor. It says, by purchasing this book, you have made the greatest commitment any disciple of Jesus Christ can make to get to know him better. According to John 1.1, 1, 1, the word is God. Therefore, when you are studying and getting to know the word, you are studying and getting to know God. I love that. The better you know and love the word of God, the better you will know and love God. This book will help you become consistent in your daily devotions with God, establish a powerful prayer life, set goals, and give you an increased revelation of God's word. So awesome, really great promises, Pastor. This is probably one of the greatest tools we've ever created for helping people to walk closer to God, to, to be a better disciple of Jesus Christ, and to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And that's actually one of the things it says here. This book will also be a great tool to disciple others. You can introduce your family members and friends to this devotional and ask them to commit to studying it with you. But remember that you can only help others grow in the capacity that you yourself are growing. I love that. Uh, this, is the, this is what should be happening. Uh, the, the American church, uh, and I say America because if you go to third world countries, it's a little, di it's, it's different. Um, and because, I'll tell you why, they don't have a lot of options. That, that, like, we as Americans have so many options. Like, right now, there's people in our church that are at our interior mills today. There's people that right now decided to sleep in, and they're doing Netflix, Netflix and chill. They're not here. You know, they're, they're, this is what's happening right now because we have so many, we got YouTube, we got all these things that steal our attention. In third world countries, they don't have that. So that, that means that it, going to church is like an outing. It's a great thing. So this is, this is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to make sure that we're committed to our spiritual growth and spiritual prosperity because this is, this is how life is going to turn out. Above all, I wish that you prosper. This is what God's saying. I wish, this is God's wish, that God wanted me to do good. He goes, yeah, above all. I want you to prosper and be in health. That means I want you to advance. I want you to succeed. I, I, I want things to go well with you. Um, and I want you to be healthy too. Emotionally healthy, mentally healthy, relationally healthy, physically healthy. If you're wondering if I want you healthy and prosperous, above all, I want you to do that as your soul prospers. Have you ever thought about your spiritual prosperity, your soul prosperity? You're never going to prosper spiritually without making a decision. I really want to grow spiritually. And you're going to have to, this is the idea, you'll never grow in an area you're not committed to growing. So for you to grow spiritually, you have to say this year, this year, my, one of my goals, you, you might have a goal, I, I want to get a house, or I want to get a higher paying job, or I want to lose 30 pounds, and I'm going to go to, you know, 24-hour fitness, and I'm going to join Jenny Craig, and I, I'm going to get my hair done, and I'm going to get new nails, and I'm going to get a new dress for New Year's Eve. All that's good, all that, do all that, but don't forget, have you ever set a goal to grow spiritually? Wow. Because that your life is going to reflect your spiritual growth. What he's saying is how you grow spiritual is going to determine your prosperity, your advancement, and your health. Don't expect to be mentally and spiritually and emotionally healthy if you're spiritually anemic. Be careful that you're... You're gaining all kinds of weight in the physical realm because you feed yourself so much. But in the spiritual realm, you're anorexic because you have no spiritual diet. And you're never going to have a spiritual diet until you make up your mind. I'm going to read the word every day. Say it with me. Every day. Like the scripture says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And what he was saying is... You have physical food, and you get that, and I get that, and there's fast food places all over your hood, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't, we've, we've lost the art of cooking because I could go get a 90-cent 90, 90 taco, 
at, Pop, uh, at Del Taco, right? But the, but the idea is you make sure that you feed your body through to two, three, four times a day, snacks and all kinds of dessert. But, but be careful that you're feeding your body, but your soul is starving. And you're, because of that, your family's starving, your emotions are starving, you're unhealthy, and you're wondering, what's wrong? And God's saying, you know what's wrong? Spiritually, you're unhealthy. And when you're spiritually unhealthy, your life is unhealthy, and it will, it will even go into your physical health. How many understand this? If you're mentally unhealthy, it will affect your physical health too. It will affect your body as well. So anyways, this is what we're doing. We're going to study God's Word, but also... Make a commitment that we're not just studying God's word. Our home is going to be a place where God's word is taught and obeyed. Say it with me. Our home is going to be a place where God's word is what? Taught and, and obeyed. obeyed. There's a lot of content. We're going to have some God content in our homes. And understand, that's going to be the hardest thing you've ever done. Watching movies is easy. Having conversations and parties in your house is easy. Celebrating birthday parties, that's all part of life. But now all of a sudden setting some time aside that you, your wife, your kids, your buddies, your home is going to actually have a Bible study at least once a week. That's going to take some work because every devil in hell does not want you to have God in your home. So don't think you're going to be healthy just on a Sunday diet. You don't do that with your physical life. Why would you do that with your spiritual life? What if we just said eat once a week? You'd be like protesting. <laughs> You would call this church a cult. We only eat once a week around here. I'm leaving this church. I'm going to go to a church I could eat every day, huh? You maybe even have an attitude, but why would you do that with your spiritual life? God's telling you every day, daily bread, daily study, daily, come on, daily content. There's all kinds of content creators out there, I'm telling you, and they're sucking the life out of you, sucking the, the the peace out of you, sucking your dream out of you, and you're watching, you know about everybody's life, but you don't know about your own life, and you don't know about God's life, and this is what's happened. You watch, you know everybody's business on Facebook, and you're commenting, and taking notes, and oh my gosh. You know everything about the Kardashians, you know all the drama that's going on all over the world, and, and I have all kinds of opinions, but this is a problem. You know everything in the world, but you don't know the word. And if you don't know the word, this is what's going to happen. Life is going to destroy you, and, you, and your kids won't be a match for the lies of the devil. You're going to have to train your kids, you're going to have to train your family how to know the word, study the word, preach the word, teach the word, live by the word, obey the word. So when the enemy comes with his lie, the lies, he said, man, that's a lie, man. I don't believe that. Keep that stuff to yourself. They'll stand up in class and say, teacher, that's not true. I'm not saying be rude, but teach your kids how to stand up for righteousness and they're going to get that core values in them by teaching them the word. It's not going to be an accident. Okay, so well, I, I, at, we're well, still just, I mean, I don't even know. Let's get through the book. <laughs> this book is full of God's word, though. That's one of the things, yeah, Pastor. That's right, so that's it right. has 10 books of the Bible, Matthew, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, 2 Thessalonians, 2 Timothy, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 2 John, Jude, and three chapters of Proverbs. That's what we're going to cover this year, 10 brand new books of the Bible. We're also going to have video teachings that are accessible all, um, all throughout the year. In fact, the start of this year, we're going to have the whole first 21, 23 days of the year. We're going to have daily devotionals. Then we're going to have weekly devotionals, overviews of all that's going on. And that's just the beginning because there's also a ton of amazing tools that you're going to cover right here. So are you saying on the first 21 lessons, yes. there's going to be also a video in the morning Right. They they could actually... Study the yep. genealogy, let's say the first day. Yeah. Study that, and then there's also going to be a teaching explaining that that portion of scripture. Exactly. So there's we're going to commentary. So we're, so, so we're going to basically start you off um, understanding how to study the Bible. It's going to be awesome. So this is what we want to do. We're going to do a 21 day fast. Someone say 21 days. 21 days. 21 days. We'll talk about that on Wednesday. Wednesday we're going to launch a 21 day fast. We're going to be united. And this is what we're doing. We're telling the devil, we're telling ourselves, we're telling God, I need you more than anything, including food. This year, I'm not going to go into 2024 with real battles, with real struggles, with, with real challenges, with, with real pain and real losses without you in my life. I'm going to, this year, I will not do this life alone. God, I'm making up my mind. 
this 21 day fast is prioritizing you over everything including food and you know what you're going to do get God's attention there's nothing like getting God's attention like fasting it, it gets God's attention you know what it means I'm serious I guess man I've been looking for somebody that's serious because how many know God is serious if Jesus started his life with a fast, I think we, his, his ministry with a fast, 40 days, we should start off our year with a fast. 21 days, we're launching Good. Wednesday. Say it with me, Wednesday. Wednesday. So we're going to be here united. All of us are going to be here united on Wednesday, and we're going to launch the fast together. I'm going to tell you how, you how you can fast. There's three types of fast. We'll get on that on Wednesday. There's a fast that every one of us can do. But Wednesday, we're going to launch together, be united, and we're going to believe for miracles and fire this year and more souls getting saved than ever come on we're going to believe that God's going to use you in a greater way we're going to believe that you're not only going to get set free God's going to use you to set other people's free we're going to, this is what we're going to do we're going to our lives should match up with the Bible let's stop downgrading the Bible to match our lives let's upgrade our lives to yeah. match up the Bible how many Amen. believe that's what God wants for us yeah. but you'll never have that if you don't start getting a strong word life right so many great tools in this book, Pastor. One of the things that's right at the start is these 18 growth habits. And I know we've talked about you're going to write a book about these habits because this is so important to the life of every believer, learning right. how to grow, learning how to really prioritize things. There's so many great habits here. We probably can't cover all of them. But this is set up in a way that you could walk this through with a neighbor, with a coworker, with your child. So it's a very straightforward, something that we could all agree on. It starts with saying, I'm going to agree. I'm going to check these off. I, maybe let me read this. If you desire to prosper and grow in everything you do, there are several indispensable habits you should develop in your life. Check off each one of these as you read them and sign off your commitment to grow. So this is our commitment we're making. I want to say this, that good habits must be developed. Say it with me. Good habits must be developed. You don't have to develop bad habits. You already got those. Yeah. Like, b bad habits, they just come naturally, right? Good habits don't come naturally. Hmm. Good habits must be developed. And you'll never develop good habits until you make up your mind. So there's 18 growth habits that you could develop. They're right here in the book. Uh, this alone could help you um, reach someone in your, at your job, reach your children. And just talk about these habits. They're amazing habits. So if I have a neighbor that I want to start a Bible study with, um, what we're going to do is just talk about, you want to grow? These are some habits. Are you, um, before we do it, are you committed to grow and develop these habits? And growth habit number one, immediately, immediately apply whatever you learn. Mm -hmm. How many believe that's a great habit? Yeah. Stop procrastinating. You learn something, apply it. Say it with me. Learn and apply. If you do that, you'll grow quickly. Mm -hmm. Not everybody in this church grows at the same rate, and I'll tell you why. Because some of us are delayed obeyers. Wow. And there's others that are immediate obeyers, and that's why someone could be here for one month and surpass someone that's been here for 10 years because they have a habit of hearing it and applying it, hearing it and applying. You know what happens to that person? They grow really fast because your growth is not in the amount of time that you put in. Your growth has to do with how much you apply. So if you become the developing habit, I learn it, I apply it, I learn it, I apply it, I learn it, I apply it. You know what's going to happen? You're going to have massive growth quickly. You're going to mature quickly and you're going to reproduce quickly that means mm. when you grow up and you mature this is and you grow this is what you do you reproduce yourself the reason why um uh this is the, the problem we have in christianity sometimes they want to we want to bring people to mature believers so they could speak to them and god says i want to mature you so you could speak to them mm. you know how dangerous we become that we're not just a sunday morning church man you got to hear my pastor it's good i want you to bring them so they could hear but don't wait to for sunday because sunday might be too late they need to get saved today and god wants you to not only get it he wants you to apply it and then help others learn this thing and when you help others learn this is what's going to happen you're going to find purpose and when you God wants to use you mightily yeah. so let's learn and apply and then teach people how to learn and apply so growth habit number two teach others what you learn there it goes 
Growth habit number three, set big goals and work hard to achieve them. Growth habit number four, do your best and more than, it, than it's expected. Finish what you start. These are all great habits. We go down to um, growth habit number three, read and study the Bible daily. Um, growth habit number 14, pray daily. Make positive declaration of yourself. That's 18 of them. Mm -hmm. And who wouldn't agree? Like, that's good. Now, what you get a commitment and they're willing to commit to this, then you can hold them accountable. And you can say, okay, let's meet every week and let's go over... Um, your goals, let's go over life, and let's cover, let's cover a few scriptures every week. We'll have a small Bible study every week, and this is what's going to happen. I'm equipping you, God's equipping you, not only to learn this, but to duplicate it. Somewhere else, your neighbor, your friends, your children, your husband, your wives, your cousins, the people that God puts in your path, they need the word of God. But understand this, they'll never believe in God. They'll never be trained. They'll never be discipled until you show up and say, I'll disciple you. I'll train you. What I'm learning, I don't know a lot, but the little I learn, I'll pass it on to you. Will you commit to meet with me on a weekly basis and commit to these 18 growth habits? And you'll be surprised how many people will be willing to do it if you just put yourself out there and ask them to join you in it. How many believe that would happen? Yeah. That's how Jesus made disciples. Let's keep going. Perfect. So one of the things I love about our book, Pastor, this year and every year that we've done it is that there is a place for us to get vision and goals for our life. This is a massively important tool that really for me, when I first came to the church, I had, I had not been doing that. I had not been getting vision for my life and goals for every year. And you really taught us and you've taught our church to do this. And this is an amazing uh, opportunity. There's a place for you to write these things down. We have a verse that talks about how important it is to write down the vision and the goals that God's given us. Here in Habakkuk 2.2, it says, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. And we're talking about how setting goals throughout the year, getting this vision of what God wants to speak in our life. Would you tell us a little bit about why that's so important, Pastor, especially that word for the year? You know, um, when we're talking about writing down something, uh, it, this, is, this is a saying that you, maybe you've heard. If you aim for nothing, you hit it. And, and if you don't know where you're headed, un, understand you're, headed, you're going nowhere. You're just going to be going around in circles. I, I, I love what, what the Word of God says. It says, in the last days, check this out. How many believe we're in the last days? Yeah. In the last days, I'm gonna, this is what God says. I'm going to pour out my spirit. I'm going to pour out my what? Spirit. His spirit upon all flesh, upon everybody. And this is this upon all the believers. And this is what he's, he says he's going to do. You're going to get dreams, mm -hmm. um, visions, and prophetic words. This is what he's saying. I'm going to communicate to you your future. Right. I'm going to show you where, you're, where you should be headed. I'm going to give you my plans for your life. Now. God is already pouring his spirit out. The question is, are you getting the download? Now, you need to get a download because you could get overwhelmed by your present life, get so focused on your past life. Your future is not going to be great if you're focusing on your past mistakes, your past life, who hurts you. This is a time you got to let go of the past. I'm done with the past. I've, I've learned my lessons from the past, but I'm making my mind up. I'm moving towards the future. And I'm not moving just towards any future. I'm moving towards a bright future. And then, and if someone asks you, where are you headed? What are your goals? You got, I'm telling you this, you have to have them written down somewhere. I already, I already did this. I wrote down 12 of them already. I'm already in day four or something in the daily growth book because I'm just getting a week ahead. So I, I, but I already wrote them down. If someone asks me, what's 2024 going to look like? I'm, I am not saying that there won't be trials, tribulations, or difficulties. But I do know this. I'm headed somewhere. And my trial and my difficulty, my losses aren't my final destination. I am going somewhere. I'm, it might be hard, and it might be the hardest thing I've ever have done, and I might feel like quitting, but I'm not changing what God showed me. Because he showed me it, I've written it down. I've received it. Don't you give up on me in the middle of the process because God's not done with me. God did not give me vision to, te to, to, te to, to tease me. He gave me vision so I know where I'm headed and I'm excited about my future. Right now, I'm going to get through this valley. I'm going to get through the shadows of death. I'm going to get through the trials of my life. And by the time I'm done, I will not be where I'm at today because I started at point E. But by the time I'm done, I'm going to get to point B and I know where I'm headed. I wrote it down. 
Understand this, if you're too lazy to write your own dreams, goals, and vision down, don't ever think you're going to have what it takes to put the work in to see it come to pass. It starts with writing it down. Read that portion there. Yeah, so great quote here. Setting goals is the first step toward turning the invisible into the visible. Amen. And that came from our vision masterclass pastor, which is also part of the next tool that we have, which is our 90 day big goal. And that was something that really came out of that class. This is incredible goal setting and vision uh, accomplishing class that you taught. And this is one of the tools in our book that we're going to set one of those yearly goals as our 90 day goal. And we're going to develop an action plan for how to hit that and walk that through. I love this book because you got that tool and you got a weekly check-in for your goals. You got a daily check-in for your goals. So we're really learning how to set goals and accomplish them through using this book. So this book is really, it's a great tool to develop a mindset um, of your children, young adults, yourself. Have you ever set goals? Have you ever trained someone to set goals? Uh, the people, th there's only... This is the reality is, is mo only 3% of, of, of people set goals. Only 3%. The other 97% don't set goals at all in life. And this is what they found out. The 3% that set goals are 10 times more successful than the, oh, the whole 97% that don't set goals. You were created to use your imagination, not to worry, not to think about worst case scenarios. And this is the problem, is most of us have been trained to think negatively. So you're gonna have to retrain your thinking to start imagining great things in your future because that's what God's thinking about you. And this is what the Bible says, without vision, my people perish or they cast off restraint. You know what that means? If you don't know where you're headed, you live a sloppy life. That means you will not sacrifice today for a better tomorrow because you're not aiming for a better tomorrow. You don't even know what you're headed towards. The reason there's a lot of things I don't do because I know that if I do it, it has nothing to do. It's counterproductive to where I'm headed. So it causes me to restrain myself because I'm going somewhere. I remember when I was in high school, I already know that I was called to pastor, be a spiritual leader. Uh, be, I, I was called to be a leader. I knew it. And I remember a girl that I really thought she was beautiful. Lisa ain't here today, so we could talk. <laughs> I was just checking. She ain't here. If she was here at first service, she probably ain't tuning in either. But that girl was fine. Not to get out. I just kidding. She was. Uh. I had my eye on her, right? So I was, so I was, I was in biology course, uh, uh, biology, and I was sitting in the, in the far left corner, and she was sitting almost in the far right corner, and I was always trying to catch her eye and like wink at her, do some corny like that. <laughs> so, and, and this is what happened. In the middle of the semester, the teacher says, let's change seats. I stayed in my seat. She came and sat right next to me. I go, girl. Right? Be careful what you ask for, right? So she sat right next to me. And I mean, she did not waste time. She was fast. Small conversation. All of a sudden, quickly, she, she, she asked me, she goes, um, Marco, this weekend, my parents are going to be gone. Why don't you come over this weekend over my house? We could have some fun. And she was one of the top cheerleaders in the school. She had green eyes, like red hair. I don't know if it was, it was I don't know if it was, she was, she's a Mexican girl. Red hair, I think it was dyed. <laughs> nice tan, no, I'm just <laughs> So anyways, now what stopped me from going, taking this invitation? Because anyone would have took the invitation. You know who would have took the invitation? Someone that did not know where they were headed. Right, right. So soon as she gets the invitation, I go, this has nothing to do with being a pastor. This is going to get me off track. And this is definitely a no because it has nothing to do with me be, be, being a future leader. So this is what I told her. I go, I, go, I don't know if I can say her name because she might be here. <laughs> or online or something. I told her, no. I, and I told her, I'm a Christian. I'm living for God. And I made a decision, I'm going to wait till I'm married. And then she says, are you gay? I go, no, I'm not gay. I'm just committed to Jesus. She moved the next day. 
She didn't sit next to me. And see, see what happens, a lot of us can't restrain ourselves because you don't have a clear vision of your future. You know what, what, you know what successful people do? They practice delayed gratification. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that God doesn't want you to enjoy sex. He wants you to enjoy sex in a healthy, committed relationship in a marriage. And if you'll wait to do it God's way, it'll be healthy. It'll be long lasting. You're going to build something that's going to be strong. And it, it, so it was a choice I had to make. I'm going somewhere. So therefore, I can't do this because it's going to disqualify me from the dream and the vision. Some of you guys right now, vision is going to be massively important for you because if you don't get a vision, you're going to have the same up and down Christian walk you've had for years. And the problem is you're trying to destroy, you're trying to overcome your lust. And instead of trying to overcome your lust, you better get on purpose, find out your vision, find out where you're headed and say, now I know where I'm headed. So I'll say no to that. So I can say yes to that. And if you say yes to your temporary pleasures, you're saying no to your great destiny. How many understand that? Without vision, you cast off restraint. Is anybody headed somewhere? Come on, are you willing to practice delayed gratification to have a better life in the future? That's vision. You better write it down. So 90-day goals is, is what you're saying. One goal. In these next 90 days, this is what I'm going to get done. I was just talking to um, one of the, one of the um, our members. He, he, I was sitting over there um, during worship, and he came up to me. His name's Rohan. And he, 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 he practiced his night. He went to the Vision Master class that we had. And he wrote down a 90-day goal. And he was living in Pasadena. And he wanted to become a homeowner in San Bernardino. So he, he, he told me, Pastor, I wrote down my 90-day goal. I want to buy a house in San Bernardino. So he made that decision to buy a house in San Bernardino. He told me about it. He wrote it down. He wrote, he wrote down seven action steps to get there. And, and then we prayed about it. And then he started working on it. What he started doing was looking at houses in San Bernardino, and, and he looked at some new houses in Vermont Estates and looked over there, and he found a house that he really liked. But there was, the problem was there's 14 people trying to get it, and to get the house, he would need over $100,000 that he didn't have. And he would say, he goes, but I'm moving towards it. I'm taking action. My first step is find the house, make an offer on it, and if they accept it, I'll go from there. Out of the 14 people that wanted that house, they gave it to him. You got the house. But now there was a problem. They're building the house. He's picking all the material for the house, the countertops, the floors. He's picking all that out, but he don't have the full down payment. So he, he's, now, he's now literally, last week, he's $50,000 short. And I know he's $50,000 short. So he asked me to go to the house because they're doing a walkthrough. They think he has all the money. He don't. He goes, these are the floors I picked. These are the counters I picked. And he goes, but he's $50,000 short. Where's he going to come up with $50,000? So he, he goes, can you come over and just pray and, and let's, 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 let's walk on the property and declare it with me and agree with me. I go, oh, I'll go. I go. That's, you know, that was the day after I hurt my, my, my leg. I'm limping over there in pain, but I'm going to help him achieve his dream. I, this is what I've learned. When you get a dr dream and you get a vision from God, there's people that are assigned to your vision. They're assigned to your dream, and they won't help you until you know where you're going. Do you understand there's people here on earth that have what you need if you just get a vision? So, 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 so this is, he kneeled down over there. He, they're, they're trying to close escrow in like a couple, uh, like a week. He's $50,000 short. He tells me, goes, Pastor Marco, I got the money. I go, tell me. I go, how'd you get it? He goes, I'm in real estate. You won't believe it. This has never happened to me. I was selling a piece of property. It was a distressed people property. It wasn't even beautiful. Some guy wanted it, and he paid $160,000 over asking, paid cash, and he wanted to close in five days. So because he closes in five days, I'm going to get my commission, and my commission, I needed $50,000, is $55,000, and I'll have it before closing of escrow. I'm saying this is not all about buying houses, but this is about getting a dream of your kids being saved. You're doing ministry like you've never done. You're getting on fire for God. God using you to cast out demons. That you, God uses you in wisdom. That God's using you to change your life. But you got to make up your mind. If you don't even spend time 
get a download from God, understand this, you're going to be a victim the rest of your life, blaming everybody and being jealous of people moving ahead. Why not me? Why, why come everybody else gets a shot now? How come not me? <laughs> and, and, and understand, what do you want? Someone feel sorry for you? Why don't you understand that life, this, life is available for all of us. God's word for it works for anybody that will apply it. We're not here to go to church. We are here to fulfill a purpose and do some great things. But you'll never achieve great things until you have great thoughts. Right? Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on. God's trying to take you higher. Amen. Higher, higher. Hi, the song that goes like that. Hi, hi. I don't know what the song is. <laughs> well, okay. Pastor, another amazing tool, a uh, big part of this book is prayer, learning right. to pray. Right. And we have a list here called Things I'm Praying For This Year. It's got 10 slots, but I don't think you want everyone to fill that out immediately, right? You okay, want yeah. to take time on this. So the Bible says don't worry about anything. What should you worry about? Nothing. Okay, but it tells you what to do. Instead, like, the idea is I will naturally worry. Telling me not to worry is not good enough. I'm like, okay, so what should I do? Oh, this is what you should do. Instead, pray about everything. What should you do? You shouldn't be worrying about everything. You should be praying about everything. You know what you should be doing? Including God in everything. And when you start praying about something, this is what God does. He starts giving you his perspective. He starts giving you his insight. He starts giving you his solution. He starts giving you his wisdom. He starts giving you his power. He starts giving you his peace. See, what you're going through is not a problem. It's how you think about what you're going through. If you know I'm going to get through this thing, and then God gives you an idea, God gives you a scripture, God gives you something to stand on, you're good. It says, instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. You know what is giving you some keys here? That when you're praying, you should be receiving at the same time. Some say, pray and receive. receive. Pray and receive. So let's say you're worried. I don't have a job, man. I just, man, the bills are coming. Uh, all that worry is not going to get you a job. But what about you going and kneeling down by, this, by your bed? And you don't have to kneel down to pray. But let's say, say, say you do this because you're really serious. And you kneel down. Like, I'm serious, Jesus. I'm kneeling. I need you, right? And say, God, I need a job. Your word says, and this is, what I, this is what I did when I needed a job. Your word says that I should earn my living by the sweat of my brow. You've commanded me to work. And if you've commanded me to work, I need a J-O-B. You know me. <laughs> and then as I began to pray, God gave me a picture. And this is what he, he downloaded. He goes, when you pray to me, I answer in abundance. I remember he told me that. He goes, now, you're not just going to get one job offer. You're going to get multiple job offers and you could choose. So this is what I did. I thanked him for the job. And then I came out of that room excited. I said, why are you smiling? I got a job. I got multiple job offers. So, of course, I filled out applications. Of course, I did my part. And you know what happened? I got multiple job offers. And then I started choosing which one I wanted because I serve a God of abundance. And by the time I was done, I was an unemployed. I was an employed in a place I wanted to work that could supply the needs of my family. Give God some praise. Thank him for what he's done. So don't pray and leave with worry. Pray and leave with your petition being answered by faith. Thank you, Jesus. I receive it. How many believe that you can pray and receive it before you physically see it? Amen. All right. Awesome. Oh, so, okay. I want to say this. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, this is, has 10, 10 prayer requests. I don't want you to write all 10 today. I want you to write them as you go. So you might start off with just one. Put what's really urgent for you on this. So as you go through the year, you'll have different things that become super urgent. And then you're going to put that on your prayer list as you go through life. And you're going to start seeing God answer these prayer requests. So don't just fill them all at once. I got two things on there, and that's all they are. And, and one of them, I said, God, I need a word of the year. I wrote that down. And God answered that. So I got to check that off. I got it. I got a word of the year for the church. And that's going to be tonight. I'll tell you this. You, if, if you're a member of this church... You're not supposed to be anywhere but the house of God tonight, unless, else, unless there's an emergency. But you should be here. We're going to end the year, and we're going to start. We're going to end the year and start 2024 in the house of God. Well, we're saying, God, 
we're going to start different. Maybe you're going to, your, your friends might invite you, invite you to the backyard party, your family. Oh my God, you think you're so good now. You don't even come with the family. I said, no, 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 it has nothing to do with that. I'm prioritizing my life. And if I keep making the same decisions and start off my year getting drunk and getting high and arguing and fighting with you in the front yard, it's not going to change my life. I'm done with the lust. I'm done with the drinking. I'm done with the drugs. I'm done with hanging out with people ain't going nowhere. I'm making up my mind. I'm serving God in 2020. 24 and nothing nothing's going to change unless I make a decision to change so we're going to be here tonight you're going to get a word for the year it's going to be a promise from God it's going to be awesome okay let's go all right, let's go. so we have the growth let's go, track. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, Pastor. We have the growth track checklist, which is a simple checklist for you to follow through to make sure you're going through all the discipleship process here at our church. Starts with being baptized, goes all the way to LU. Then we also have the Bible study tools. Now, I know this is a huge part of really getting the most out of every day's reading. Do you want to talk a little bit about those tools and how you use them? Yeah, I, I, um, the first lesson in here is the genealogy of, of, of Jesus per se or, or Joseph life. And it just, in Matthew chapter one, the first verses are just a whole bunch of names. There is a record of the answers of, this is what it says, the answers of the Messiah, a descendant of David and Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brother. So it keeps on going. And I'm like, man, this is a tough way to start this book. <laughs> because, and then it asks you three things. Three insights. Three things that you learn. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I studied the Bible, and I'm like, I don't know. So what I did was I just looked up because there's in, in, the, in the book it has commentaries, and it has the QR codes that you can look at them. So I just look at Bible commentary on the genealogy. And I found out in the genealogy um, was interesting that the, a lot of the people that were in the ge genealogy were suspect people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a whole bunch of perfect people. I looked at four women that were in, the, in there, and two of them were prostitutes. And it's part of Jesus' genealogy. And, and, then, and then as I'm reading, the, the, I find that out. And then God starts speaking to me. He goes, look. He goes, I came out of, I, I came in a sense, the genealogy has prostitutes, has liars, adulterers in there. And I worked through them. And if I worked through them and I came out of them, how much more can I work through you? And what he's saying, your past and your failures and your background does not disqualify you from having an amazing move of Jesus Christ in your life. And I go, praise God. Hallelujah for genealogies. <laughs> but I found that in the commentary. So I started looking it up. And so now, you know, as I did that, you know, as I did that, look at me, look at all the stuff I wrote. I got a lot of stuff I wrote. So I, I, I told him a little, uh, I'm a little, oh, this, is a, there's a, this is a genealogy right here. I just started writing down all that stuff. Um, and that's what's going to happen to you. You're going to start getting insight. But understand, don't expect to get insight if you're not digging. Hmm. This, this is the idea. You cannot study the board superficially. Hmm. You're going to have to dig for gold and you will find it. Uh, uh, be careful. I, well, I didn't understand that, you know, that, that, how, how crazy it is. You figure out how to build that thing for your kid that you bought for, for Christmas and you read all the instructions. But when it comes to the Bible, you give up before you get to the gold. This is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to learn how to dig for gold and not get out of it until you get some insight. How many believe you could get that? If you seek, you will find. Pastor, so we have two more tools. I know we're getting very close to even yeah. time here. We have the prayer guide, and we also have the disciple-making manual. These are two massive tools. I don't know how in-depth you want to go into the prayer guide, but part of this book is about helping us develop the daily habit of prayer. That's one of our growth habits, and we want everybody to be praying. Jeremiah 33.3 has a really powerful promise from God yeah. about prayer, right? Call to me, and I will answer you. And tell you and even show you great and mighty things, things which have been confined and hidden, which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish. You want to unpack that verse for us? I love it. Call to me and I will what? Answer you. That's what he's saying. He goes, I'm, I'm telling you, come to me. I'll answer you and I'll begin to show you things you don't even know about it. 
world. I'm going to show you mighty things. I'm going to give you downloads. I'm going to give you plans. I'm going to give you insight that I know you don't know. I believe even in, in prayer, you could get inventions. You mm. could get ideas for breakthroughs in your business. You could get solutions for family problems. He goes, I'm going to show you stuff you've never seen in your life. Secrets that people wish they could know. You're going to spend time with me, and I'm going to give them to you. How many of you, that's amazing. So, it, so there's, a song, there's, a, there's a song I used to sing back in the day. Called me. There, was, there was a song back in the day we used to sing. In, in our country church, I was in a little country church, and it, it, and this was a song. It, it said, "Call them up, call them up, tell them what you want. Call them up, call them up, tell them what you want. Call them up, call them up, tell them what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Call them up, call them up, tell them what you want. Everybody, call them up, call them up." Tell them what you want. Call them up. Call them up. Tell them what you want. Jesus on the main line now. And you know what God is saying? When you call me, I will not swipe. I will answer every single time. And if you call on me, I will answer. And if you ask me, I will give you the petitions that you ask me. But if you don't ask, you don't receive. I love that. Awesome. So it shows you how to pray for an hour, if you want to pray an hour, as different, five, um, seven different sections uh, of prayer. And if you spend just 10 minutes on each one of them, you pray for 70 minutes. Some of them you can spend five minutes. I'm not telling you have to pray for an hour every day, but if you ever wanted to, you could. You could spend time, 15 minutes on the first three, worship, thanksgiving, praise. And it gives you the, the teaching. Also, there, it puts a QR code. I actually teach you how to pray for a whole hour. This is gold. Because your prayer life is going to, this is what God's going to do in your prayer life. God's going to give you specific instructions. The reason a lot of people don't succeed, they're too general about life. They don't have specific details. And God says, I'm a detail-orientated God. And if you'll spend time with me, you won't miss things because I'm going to give you the details of it. And in those details is your success. So you want to spend time in prayer. Get God's insight. All right, let's do the last two. The last, um, so the last part of this is yeah. disciple making, right? Talking oh, yeah. about the disciple making manual and really looking at the discipleship group lessons. Okay, so every person in our church, we have a goal as a church. Our goal is to launch 1,728 discipleship groups. We want every single person to be a part of that, to either be a part of a DG or leading a DG. And so our discipleship groups, our DGs, our, all their lessons are in this book. 53 lessons that Pastor Markle's personally developed with the team for discipling people. And every week you'll find a, a group lesson that looks very similar every time. It has six steps for leading a meeting, opening a prayer, growth questions, three powerful growth questions you can ask your people, the attendants, take then the actual lesson that you're going to go through a passage that we've read that week. Then you're going to encourage people to give and close in prayer. Every week there's a lesson that is developed and you can access it through a QR code on that page. The QR code will take you directly to it. You can also access it on the website or on our app. So there's multiple ways to get to it, but it's in this book and it's based on the readings that we're going through together as a church. I love this because I can picture husbands, fathers, moms, parents taking their kids through this book. I can picture people taking their neighbors through this book, really using this as a disciple making tool. I love this book. And, and the, guys, I, I want to talk to the men right now. You know, God has called you to be a leader. And I'm not saying, that, of course, ladies as well, but guys, God is, if, you, if you're a, a husband, you're a father, um, God's called you to be the priest of your home. Right. If there's anybody that's the master teacher or at least a teacher in a home, it should be you. The Bible says you as a husband are supposed to wash your wife with the word of God, with the word of God. That means, that how are you going to wash her with the word of God if the word of God's never spoken in your home, in your family? You got to disciple your children. There's going to be no, there's going to be zero spiritual results unless you bring scripture in your home. And this is going to give you an opportunity to bring scripture. And this is so easy, a caveman can do it. So, and I, that's a commercial guy. I just want to let you guys know I'm keeping up with stuff. I'm just kidding. But, um, but we could do this. And, and how do you, I know you might feel uncomfortable doing it for the first time. It might be the hardest thing you'll ever do to change the schedule of your home and just give an hour a week 
to Bible study, it might be the hardest thing you'll ever do because nobody wants to do it. Everybody want, they're used to staying in their rooms and playing around and watching YouTube and Instagram. They're not going to be used to it. But understand how you develop a new appetite is you start feeding your family what you want them to build an appetite for. Don't expect for everyone to be hungry for the word without the word even being introduced. So we got to start, and it's, it's going to be hard, but if you could set this schedule, it will change the dynamics of your family forever. And, and every single person in your family should get a book. That means this is not one book per family. This is one book for person, people in your family. So you want to get one for your teenager, one for your 12-year-old, one for your wife, one for your husband, one for your 13-year-old, one for your 15-year-old, 16-year-old. And you make a declaration. We're going to take one hour a week. And we're going to come together and we're going to do a, a quick um, small group Bible study. It's in the, in the book. You're going to study it, learn it, get familiar with it, and just ask the questions. It's just go and ask questions. And you're going to be surprised how it's going to build some strong relationships in your home. And you're going to start finding out things. Instead of making, letting it get all crazy, let's do some preventive maintenance. And let's get the problems before they turn into monsters. How many of you that can happen if we start like reading and studying the Word? So awesome. Is that it? That's awesome. That's it, Pastor. Okay. So everyone get your book tonight. We're gonna, it's going to be awesome. Wednesday night is we're launching the what? What are we launching on, on Wednesday night? 21 Day Fast. Come out. It's going to change your life forever. I've seen so many miraculous breakthroughs in 21 days. Some, some things that used to take years will get done in 21 days of solid devotion from God. And we're going to start off this year giving our all because we want everything that God has for us this year. We're no longer holding back. Our church is going to be known not only for disciple making around the world, but also our church is going to be known for loving, spirit-filled, on fire believers. I, and, and God, this year, you're going to, we're, the goal is to be on fire. How many want to be on fire like for God? I just like, I love God. And that's a commitment. And when you're on fire, it starts burning all, all the stuff right around you. Just get on fire and devils are not going to want to hang around with you. They're going to say, man, I don't want to hang around them. Man, they're on fire. Every time I hang around them, I get burnt. That's right, devil. You know, you don't even know, you know who you're messing with right now. I'm not the 2023 Christian that was barely making it. I'm the brand new 2024 new version. So... This is what we're going to do now, just one last second, is that um, in, in, order to, in order to really have a great year, the first commitment you got to make is commit to give your life 100% to Jesus. You, if you don't make that commitment, it's just not going to happen. You'll never be successful in an area you're not committed to. God has said, if you'll just commit yourself to me, you will see me act. I will help you. I will build you, I will save you, but you got to commit. And I really believe that God is waiting for your commitment. He's already committed to you and he loves you and God's all in. But this is what he can't do. He can't force you into salvation, eternal life, forgiveness, a new life, freedom. It's a choice. So today, Jesus is knocking at your doors, He's not, it's, as, as you've heard. Everything that we talked about makes total sense. It, it, like, yeah, that makes sense. Even if you just came for the first time, it totally makes sense. If you don't set goals and, and you, don't make a, you don't make a commitment in the area, if, if you're not teaching your kids, don't expect your schools to teach your kids. You're going to have to teach your kids. We can't trust nobody nowadays to teach our kids. If you, you, I'm just going to let my kids, you know, make their own choices. I don't let my kids make their own choices. I'm a father. You, I'm going to tell you what to think, and I, I'm going to tell you what's right. I'm going to tell you what's wrong, and you ain't doing that in my house. Come on, let's go back to doing, come on, being parents and stop being just friends. Well, they're going to be offended. Who cares? I'd rather they be offended and get right than me be friends and they're going to hell in a handbasket and ruining their lives. Not on my watch. I'm going to make it hard for you to go to hell. Not in this house. Come on. How many come on, like this kind of language? That's right. That's why. Okay, so now. Jesus is knocking at your heart's door. Now, and, and there's a problem. When you do things wrong, it's called sin. You could do life your way and say, I don't need God. I'll do life my way. And that means when you're doing it your way, it's, you're doing it wrong. And 
You're going to do it. It's going to be sinful. And the Bible says sin leads to death. It means it destroys your life, ruins your emotions, gets you addicted. And at the end, it separates from God now and for eternity. And sin at the end brings judgment. And, and I don't think a lot of people like talking about that. But at the end of your life, you will be judged. And if you gave your life to Jesus, this is going to be good because you've been forgiven of your sins and you've been cleansed of your sins because Jesus did something for you. He loved you and me so much that he died on a cross, suffered and was beaten. Not because he did anything wrong. He was punished for our sins. The wage of sin is death. He goes, I love you so much, I'll die for you. You did the crime, I'll do the time. You did the crime, I'll pay the price. You did the crime, I'll take your guilt. It was the innocent dying for the guilty. He loves you. And I, when I hear stories like that, it's like a theme in some movies that someone gives up their lives so other people can be saved. And when you see movies like that, you go, that's heroic. That's amazing. And you start even crying because it, it, it touches your heart because that's the most loving thing you could do is give your life for someone you care for. And God is saying, don't get more overworked from a movie that, on a script because there's a real God that absolutely loves you. And he said, I love you so much that I suffered and died for your sins so you could be forgiven. Today you could have a brand new start, but it starts with a commitment. God's committed to you and he loves you. How more can he be committed to send his son to die for your sins? He died for his sins. He rose from dead, conquered death. And he, what, he want, what, he wants to, what does he want to do? He wants you to give him all your bad and he wants to give you all his good. That's it. You give him your pain. You give him your addiction. You give him and you come the way you are. He goes, let's make a deal. You give me your jalopy life, I'll give you a brand new life. Right? You bring, the, you, bring, you bring your broken down car, I'm going to give you a brand new car. What God is saying is, we're not talking about exchanging cars, we're talking about your life. It's just a metaphor. It's your time. So I'm going to count to three, and you're the moment of decision. Jesus died publicly for you. And if you would ask him, why are you doing this? He says, because I love you, and I'm paying the price for every wrong thing you do, did. And you never have to live under a guilt trip no more. I know we've all failed, but God's a restorer. Even if you've lost a lot in your life, God's able to go and fix things that you can't fix. And I guarantee you this, as you begin to serve God, He's not only going to save you, He's going to restore you. And there's things that you lost, and He's going to bring them back to you. And you're going to know this, I couldn't get it back. And God says, but I can. It's not over. This is your decision. So today if you're saying, Pastor, I want to commit my life to Jesus. 100%. I've, and also there's Christians in here, you've been like lukewarm or you haven't been totally committed. It's time for you to surrender finally. So I'm all in. I'm tired of playing. I'm miserable playing. You know who the most miserable person is? A Christian that's not committed. Because you know why? You can't even enjoy the world and you can't enjoy God because you're in the middle. You're over there getting drunk and you're talking about Jesus. You're like, hey, you know, Jesus, you know, he's, he's so good. I'm messing everybody's high up, you know. But this is your day. I'm going to count to three. If you're saying, Pastor, I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want eternal life. I want to be saved from judgment. I want to be, I, I want God to give me a brand. So I want him to fill me with his spirit. I, I need a new beginning today. I want to start living the life God has for me, for me and my family. One, this is your decision. When I count to three, raise your hands all over this building. It is a choice. I'm not asking you to bow your heads and close your eyes. But I believe this. If you're embarrassed to serve God and raise your hand here, you won't do, you won't live for him out there. This is your moment. This is the proudest and best thing you could ever do. Two, when I say three, raise your hands. I want to give my life to Jesus totally. Three, raise your hands all over this building. I see the hand there. Proud of you, baby. I see the hand there. Anybody else? I see the hand over there. I see the hand. I'm proud of you. I see the hand. I see those three or four or five or six hands. More hands on this side. Anybody in the back over there? Come on. Over there. Come on. I see some hands in the back over there. Over there. Awesome. Let's all stand up together. Hallelujah. Tonight's going to be, tonight's going to be awesome. Get your book. Come tonight. We're going to start off tonight in the house of God. A Holy Ghost party don't stop. Okay. Those that raise their hands, I want you to do this for me. I want you to leave your seat and come up here. This is what you're saying. I'm leaving my old life in those seats and I'm starting a new life. I'm following Jesus. 
this is your first step. And it's, I know it's a long walk, but this is what you're doing. You're making up your mind. I'm totally committed. So if you raise your hand, come on up here. And church, let's give him a hand. Come on. The devil thought he had him the whole 2023. And God says, I'm not done. I'm still saving souls. Come on, let's give the Lord a bigger hand. In heaven, they're celebrating. Ask your neighbor, you want to go up there? I'll go up there with you. Come on, believers. It's time to recommit. It's time to get back on fire. You come with your addiction. You come with your pain. You come with your failure. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. They're still coming from all the aisles, online. Give your life to Jesus. Stand up where you're at. Pray with us right now. Come on, someone's life is going to be changed right now. Someone came in here addicted and they're going to leave free. Come on, someone came here suicidal and they're going to be left. Come on, they're going to leave here with joy, with peace, a desire to live. Awesome. Come on, they're still coming. Come on, someone's leaving their alcoholism behind. Someone's leaving their drug addiction behind. Someone leaving, come on. Someone's leaving their rejection behind. Someone's leaving, come on, I've been rejected, I've been abused. You come on, the cycle of abuse is gonna be broken right now. In the name of Jesus. Okay. Hallelujah. Are you guys ready for 2024? I'm telling you, it's gonna be crazy. Nice to see you. It's gonna be crazy. Are you ready for God to use you as a miracle worker? Like, use your power. I want you to be known in hell because the devil knows that you're a threat to him. Oh, no. Not another way we're allowed to reach born again, on fire, disciple of Jesus Christ, full of the Holy Ghost. That studies the Bible every single day. And that people are dangerous. I remember, I, I, and it was, I, I'm gonna, we're going to pray with you. But I remember I was casting the demon out of someone in my room in my office and as I'm casting the demon out the demon says I hate this church he go, he go, I, go, I go why I go Por qué? <laughs> I go why and he goes because you're led by the Holy Spirit why can't you be like other churches that demon said that I go okay we're going to continue being led by the Holy Spirit. And in the name of Jesus, I command you to come on. He came out screaming. That person was set free. And this is what God is saying. God's going to fill you with his spirit. And you're, come on, you're not just going to overcome. You're going to be more than a conqueror. Come on, let's do this. Okay. I'm going to say one thing before we pray. And maybe you haven't heard this for a really long time. I'm proud of you. It's a great decision you're making. Best decision you'll ever make. God is proud of you. I know living for God is not easy, but living for the devil is a lot harder. It destroys your life. Even the struggles and the suffering you go as a believer, at least you're doing it for a purpose and a cause. You're going somewhere. It's, it's pain, but in pain in the Lord is gain in your life. Pain in the world is just plain destruction. So let's give our lives to Jesus. If you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins and rose from the dead, you want to confess him as your Lord and Savior, you're making the decision. God's already made his decision. He loves you. He loves you so much. All God wants is a relationship with you. You bring all your stuff and he gives you his life. Are you ready to receive Jesus into your heart and get filled with his spirit, new desires, new power? And it's what you're going to do. You're going to commit to coming to church tonight, Wednesday night, you're going to commit to start studying the Word. We're going to help you join the classes. Give us a year of your life, and I guarantee your life will never be the same again. We love you. We're in this together. And, and this is the truth. We're not going nowhere. We're going to be here. I've been here for 19 years, going on 20, and I'm not going nowhere. I cannot be. They can't offer me a billion dollars to get me out of here because I'm committed to you. Of course, we got churches all over America and all over the world, but this is my home base. We are here for life. Come on, you need people like that in your life too, but God's like that, okay? Let's pray. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for loving me so much that you didn't give up on me. I thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross, resurrected from the dead to pay the price 
for my sins. I admit I'm a sinner. I've done life my way. Forgive me and set me free from all bad habits, addiction, depression, fear, anxiety. Make me new. Devil, I command you now, get out of my life. Get out of my family. In the name of Jesus, today I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Fill me now, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Jesus. I receive the free gift of eternal life. I am saved. I'm born again. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. I'm so proud of you. Tonight, a matter of fact, tonight we're going to have baptism. If you want to get baptized at 6 o'clock, we have a class at 6 o'clock, South Hall. You want to get baptized, show up at the class. 6 o'clock, South Hall. We'll get you baptized tonight. We're going to start off the year totally 100% committed. We love you. Thank you. We went a little over, but I want to thank you for being patient. Tonight's going to be awesome. God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon until 6 o'clock. I'm 6 o'clock for the class, 7 o'clock here. We love you tonight. The word of the year. Chris Webb's going to be here. It's going to be powerful.